Apologies for starting a little bit late, but eh? Can't be bad. Um, 4th of September, Monday. Autumn is just a round corner. And uh, here we are at Hilton Parish Council meeting. So, to receive any apologies or for absence and declarations of interest, we have apologies from Lily, from Dan, and Sarah. So, so sadly, that's the last minute coming for me. So, um, any declarations of interest? I'll just mention that we'll be bringing a couple of items on the agenda forward so that you can contribute to those before he goes and has a rest. He's been busy all day. Um, so, this is the point where we close the parish council meeting and open it to the floor for the general public and our county councillor to. Slamming the cellar door or something. Um, right, any comments from the floor? Two first. No, no, okay. Two okay, I've got a quick one. Uh, regarding the uh, point 3.1, A14. So over the summer, it's been, uh, I guess, recognised that the lorry volumes have increased through the village. Um, so we're trying to work out which are attributed to the A14 construction work as it's a prohibited route, as we know. Um, of course, there's no way of telling. Um, they, they haven't got a scheme yet of how they might identify those lorries to anybody else apart from those to, on site. So it's been a bit hit and miss. I reported a whole load. I think stirred something up there. I think they, they said they had 43 reports. I think Joe's had through Joe up to that point. I sent another 16 in. It's coming to the point now, I understand not through the A14 project group, but through McGeorge, through Joe Gossage, that they're going to put an electronic system in as of this week. Well, I can't get anybody to recognise that's going to be the case, where all lorries have to be pre-registered, their details pre-populated, so we would know beforehand, and also if we see lorries coming through, we can identify which ones are and which ones aren't. It's still not a great system. They have a big sign of saying this is an A14 lorry, which they also have, so... So work needs doing on that, I think, because they're, they have acknowledged there are lorries taking the shortcuts and they're being reprimanded, given the yellow card, etc. So that's one point. Um, of course, the other point um, with this is the increased volumes of HCVs, the increase in the pollution levels. So part of the HCV group, as a shame Sarah, Sarah couldn't make the last meeting we had, uh, are pushing ahead to try and do some monitoring by that group of all of the villages around the A14 area using infusion tubes because the only way to get some empirical uh, data of what the pollution levels are around here. So uh, I think they're going to write to the parish council and ask for their support to do that. Uh, that's a great thing. They've done it in other villages. Um, we had some monitoring here before. I think that would be something really good if we could support that because at the moment it's, it, there's nothing to prove what the, what the actual absolute levels are or aren't and whether they're increasing or decreasing. So, so they're the only two things on A14 I wanted to cover. Thank okay. you, Peter. Margaret? Margaret. Yes, please. Um, 5.8, the mm -hmm. Armistice Centenary. Um, first of all, could you verify something for me? When I emailed um, Joe, um, I said that I had been asked to request, uh, formally request a lighting of the beacon for the centenary, but I would have preferred it if my name hadn't been on the agenda. Is that a normal procedure. I thought normally the residents' names don't go on the agenda in that situation. Sorry, I mean I'm, I didn't realise that you would have a problem with it, obviously, in well, future. Well, it's not my it. request, you see, it's right. somebody else's. Okay, well as it came from you, I assumed it was mm. a request from well, yourselves. Anyway. So. Um, So that was really what I contacted about because I had been asked by someone to make a formal request to be for it to be discussed. I know it seems early, but things go by. Um, regarding briefly regarding ideas this far, um, one was an indoor street party here with various things happening, um, like the beacon and a peal of bells. Um, and a twinning with another Hilton in the rest of the country. Um, obviously there will be a very special Remembrance Sunday service because it 
comes on the 11th of the 11th month of that year. So um, we really need to be on our way with something or other by Christmas because these things take a lot of time to organise. So that's all. Thank you. Poppy planting. Oh, yes, poppy planting. Um, there's been a suggestion that um, the nation, particularly through scouts and guides, will plant poppies across the nation so that that will be a poppy carpet. They will be needing to be planted this year for next year. Thank you for coming. Okay. So that, that's really where things are at the moment. Thank you. Yeah. I know you've had conversations about communications. So I thought I would bring along what Houghton and Wilson do. Um, and this is, this is essentially the work of the parish. I'm quite happy to leave that with you. I know Margaret wants to have a look at it as well. <laughs> okay, after you have a look at it. <laughs> okay, so it, it's information, so it says who the parish councils are, it says what you get up to, it tells what, etc. All the sort of things that you do, except they send this round to every parishioner twice a year. Hemingford Abbots do something a little similar but maybe not as glossy, put it like that. Uh, they only do it once a year, but they have a newsletter which goes around once a year to all residents, and it's normally however long it happens to be, because it varies from year to year. But I thought it would be worth just communicating what other people do. It's got useful numbers on it uh, as well, and contacts, etc. The sort of things, the website, the clerk, etc., etc. But also things like that, which is how can the residents help you suggestion. So it's it's quite a reasonable one. In my personal view it's a little too glossy for my taste, put it like that, although I guess uh, that's their choice, not mine. So I'll pass Thank that over to, to Joe and you can have a look and pass it around and then you can give it back to me because yeah. I know Margaret wants to have a look as well. Okay. And then I'll talk about the other issues when you Okay, so the same thing, because I'm going to move those two items up. There's two items that we'd like to move up the agenda um, whilst you're here. Yeah. Okay, so on that basis, are the two members of the parish here? Any comments? Sorry, can, can I just add something? Sorry, <laughs> um, various bodies and individuals are being con contacted in the village as well. So. Oh, for the centenary? Yeah, yes. yeah. Sorry, I meant to say that. Thank you. Okay, so we'll now go back to item two on the agenda. So we um, close the public session making the parish council meeting, which is to approve minutes of the parish council meeting held on the 3rd of July. Long time ago. As we have to so. I'm happy to propose that those are approved. <coughs> Second. Well, those in favour? <coughs> Rob can't vote on this, and Ian can't vote on this. Because they weren't here. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just looking at the. Right, so, um, although the agenda says three, we're going to bring up, first of all, um, item uh, 5.5, which is the report that changes the bus timetables, routes to Whippet buses, no longer operating many services. And for this point, I will ask Ian, our county councillor, to give us some feedback. Okay. <clears throat> I think you're aware of most of the information that has come out. Uh, in Wickets, obviously, as you know, operate quite extensively in the Huntingdon area, mainly from historical uh, background because the Lees operated out of Hilton for many years and some of them still live in the village. Um, so there was a lot of services in, uh, in Hilton. They were taken over and bought out by an Australian company about 18 months ago, um, which is, they operate in London, Brazil, Australia, and Singapore and places around the world. Obviously, uh, what they've done is look at the business, and as a result of them looking at the business, they had made a decision which they can do. It's a commercial company, uh, as much as the post offices and, and others areas of uh, business so they decided that they would cease these routes 
it's about half their business, give or take. Um, and in the light of that uh, notification, um, the report went to the 10th of August to the committee, the Environment E and E committee, which I chair. And the decision at that time was to support with what we could financially uh, to try to give a little bit of a gap of a year uh, with the buses, which uh, Whippets have declined to operate. That meant from that date trying to find new operators, and that's not easy in itself because if one company doesn't do it, you have to find somebody else that will do that, uh, and not all of them were willing to do that for their own reasons, because they've got too much business, they don't want to do it, for all sorts of reasons. So we have secured um, what I would call a temporary arrangement for a year. Um, that has affected a lot of villages, Summersham's, Eerits, <coughs> Plantersham, Fenstanton. You've seen the list, I'm sure, as much as everybody else has. Um, a lot of parishes, have, uh, and I'm saying that that is a year, it's thinking time. Uh, parishes, districts, um, and it's time for you to have a, a think about the way forward, the long-term solution. Um, and a lot of them have done some surveys. Hemingford Abbots and Hemingford Grey have undertaken a survey of all their residents about the sort of things like how often, where do you go, where do you want to go, how often do you use it, etc., etc. Um, and obviously, um, the county council is not the only authority that can actually fund buses. Um, you can, as a parish. You can put money into buses. The only legal requirement that the county has is home to school transport for children going to Swayze, for instance, or to primary schools, and for special needs. So children who are perhaps needing care or going to a day centre or whatever. County council has no more responsibility than district council, town council, parishes, to fund what I call ordinary transport for the, the public. So some of them are commercial services and some of them are not commercial services. Most of the cuts were not, uh, were non-commercial, i.e. they were being already subsidised in some shape or form. Um, lots of parishes now are starting to think it's perhaps time you all got together because a lot of them around survived it's also affected as well in Huntingdon and God Manchester. Uh, there are one or two in South Cairns and one or two in the city um, and they obviously have a, a better service by and large in the city than, than some of the other areas but we're supporting all of those buses. There's one service which no operator was interested to do at all, um, not in this area but um, unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do if nobody steps forward to run a service. There's nothing one can do to force somebody else. It's fair to say Jews here, as you know, work out of Summersham, and Summersham were badly hit uh, as well. But a lot of bar nods stepped up to the plate, I think, would be the best description I would describe that as. What I'm suggesting actually now is that parishes, in the longer term, will have to perhaps start to think about what they want to do for their communities. If you go into South Cairns, for instance, South Cairns District, there are a lot of voluntary car services in South Cairns. There's a community transport provider here in Huntingdonshire and East Cairns and Fenland. It does not operate in South Cairns at all. The reason for that is because lots of villages and communities actually run their own voluntary car service. So, Villagers say, yes, I can do Mondays and I can take people to the hospital, I can take shopping, etc. So, all I'm saying to you and everybody else that I go to in parish terms is I think you need to consider the future in a year's time. Um, the year's time will be when it stops, <laughs> so it's really nine months, and now it's perhaps a little bit about what the village wants, what the parish feels about what their involvement might be in providing transport. It's not just for the elderly, by the way. Uh, it is people who go to college, it is people who go to work, who work in Cambridge, or mostly Cambridge, or work in St Ives. So it is actually something that is topical, put it like that, at the moment. You've got a year, or nine months, and that's about it. 
uh, if nothing comes forward, there will be no service in Erith, Bluntersham, Cone, Fenstanton and elsewhere, unless, unless the likes of Jews can make it commercially profitable for them to do, in which case they may take it on, I don't know at the moment whether they will see that. But it does come down to people using it, because if it you does. don't use it, yeah. it goes. I mean, it's a very simple thing to say, but unless the commercial companies actually get the patronage on, on the on the buses, the bus companies make um, make a loss, which they can't stand. And some of the subsidies are quite high per passenger. You'd be surprised how high they can be. Something like twelve pound per passenger that the county is subsidising? Well, actually, one would say, is that value for money? £12 for one person on one bus. And you see the buses sometimes going around and carrying a lot of fresh air, but not necessarily many passengers on it. And it's time, really, to see what communities want to do in the future. I'm happy to answer any question, but at the moment, that's the current position. We've got the new people in. It's not ideal in every case, because... Not all the operators could do exactly the service that we could do because they haven't got um, buses themselves to do that because they were doing other services in other places. So that's the current position. Um, no comments, observations. I just wondered if, if a commercial provider would give a quote then for the rough cost of... So I mean, if you're suggesting that maybe several parishes get together or several villages, It'd be, I suppose it would be handy to know kind of some kind of figure yes. of what the intended I can, cost. Of I can tell you, would... Sharon. Now, the community provider in this area is three hundred pound a day. Oh. I would suggest, for instance, that if several parishes got together, I'm not suggesting you do it seven days a week, fifty-two weeks of the year. But actually, if, if you all start to perhaps think, I'm not suggesting, by the way, that the council, the county council, don't help financially as well. But maybe it's an opportunity for people. But the I know that the community provider in this area is three hundred pound a day, exclusive rights for the whole day. Okay, so if you can imagine, for instance, if you got together with Erith, because most of them are around St Ives area, if you all got together. The main opportunities that you all wish to think about. So that would be a shared cost. Yeah. With, uh, and with yeah. So you could actually do a drop-off service, you know, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays, on Fridays to the market. Um, and you all get together. You all put some money in. You all free set for that. The county helps out if you like, and that may be maybe an opportunity because they're smaller buses. Remember, they're not buses. Buses. They are. What I call eight-seater, mm. co you know, um, white white vans, as I describe them. Eight-seater. They they have eight seats in them, and therefore you they could do some sort of shuttle service. I would think possibly, um, but you could invite them along with other communities, you could, and I think that's where the thinking time comes in, Sharon. It's over to thinking time. I think to see, question: Do you want to do anything? You want to do a survey because certainly Gray and Abbotts have done a survey which gives them information about what the need is. I think I'm not saying they okay, but and some of the services have, have come out better than others. Uh, I have to say, depends where, where you which community mainly largely to do with the operators because they, they won't do what you want them to do because they know what whippets have been losing quite simply. It's a close, very close connected communities and they all know each other's costs, whichever way you look at it, they, they know how many passengers get on there and things like that. So yeah, about £300 for a... I'd like to ask a question, but I'm yeah. happy for No, 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 I think you finished uh, first. It's on a personal yeah. level. And what about like, the children that are expected to go to sixth form? Because there is an expectation now that children are supposed to stay in education until they're 18 or yeah. find a job or apprenticeships. Um, why doesn't the government still have an obligation to get those children to sixth form? Well, quite simply, the government doesn't. And that comes down to what the legislation says. 
it's quite simple, the legislation is very clear, it's home to school, it's only up to a certain age, we don't, the county doesn't have the responsibility, any more than you do by the way, okay, or the districts do, to supply people that go to sixth form. I fully understand the problem. Solving it, I tried to work with the bus operators, with, bearing in mind that report went on the 10th of August, so between the 10th of August and now, there's been a hell of a lot of work going on because not only do you have to get a new provider, but you have to notify the traffic commissioner who has to prove what you're doing. And actually what you've ended up with is not ideal, but put it like this, the option was nothing at all, anywhere, or something. You've got something. <laughs> But there is no requirement, Joe, unfortunately. It just seems ridiculous that we're, they're yep. expected to be in education until they're yep. 18 now, yeah. You know. yep. I, don't, I mean, children I don't. made decisions to go to the sixth form in Cambridge before all this information came out, and now they're all stranded and have no way of getting there. Yeah, I don't disagree, Joe, mm -hmm. okay? And I've done, I've done my best. Yeah, no, no. Okay. Uh, because you're not the only community that I've had to communicate with. I've had to, one of the service, by the way, that nobody wants to do goes into Newmarket, by the way. So you might imagine I've had some people from the villages around Newmarket uh, because they didn't have a choice because nobody wants to do it. So um, that's the current position. Now, I appreciate the fact that it's not ideal for everybody uh, because a lot of people are going to work. If you look at what's happening in Grey, in the centre of the village, it's very different if you happen to live in... Um, the Yes development and lines and you live across the way in Penn Stanton bit. Um, but if you look at what's happening with Somersham, the road, the C bus, they used to want the guided bus, mm. used to start in Somersham, it's it starting in Penn Stanton. It, it will not go from, so people like Somersham, which are big villages mm. in Erith and Gluntersham, when you put them all together in Cone, when you put all those together, they're substantial numbers there. I don't disagree, Joe, but doing something about it, I'm afraid, won't tell you how much it's costing us. But it's a lot of, quite a lot of money to actually keep it going for a year. Would it be worth planning a, a kind of a joint meeting of parish councils, maybe you know, in three to six months? To, to I wouldn't need it. it for six months. No, I, I think, I think, I think the answer to that would be yes, Sharon. That would be my advice. And I'd be happy to attend. It's a big issue. Yeah, it yeah. is. Not just from, um, well, mostly from people that have got children at six four, but also elderly people that now feel completely isolated. You need to know how many people haven't got vehicles here. I know of several who haven't got vehicles and they're completely stranded here. Andy, yeah, um, all things can be commercially operated. You know, there's, there's, there's uh, universal service obligations from the likes of the Royal Mail and British Telecom because we know it's not economic to send a letter to the Outer Hebrides, but you have to do it. And to a degree, I think transportation sort of start, falls a little bit under that, especially as we're now being encouraged to reduce traffic on roads. You know, the Smarter Cambridge initiatives. Mm -hmm is for the city is great, but actually how many people go into the city and out of the city? 60,000, I think it's 60,000 a day uh, journeys in and out of, the village, out, out of the city. So they're coming from places like this. So I guess my question is, do you not feel perhaps the county council has some obligation to subsidize, to support a universal obligation where it's never going to be economically viable, like the Outer Hebrides, um, to, to, to do that, to, to get the vision together. And also, okay. if you let everybody do it willy-nilly, then it's uncoordinated. And okay. the integrated transportation system around Cambridgeshire mm -hmm. could be a spoken hub, it could be you know, a Camborne hub, so all you actually need to do is coordinate trips to Camborne along with you synchronise the buses. It's a complex area, but leaving it to the parishes to fund, I think, yeah. is going to be really difficult. It may help to explain what we've done in these camps. In these camps, we're doing a trial called Total Transport. There are many buses which go and take children from this village, this village and this village into that secondary school. And most of the time, that's what happens. And it's happened for last year, for the last 15 years or 20 years. 
in these cams what we've done actually is um, allow you and I to get on that bus which is a departure from the current way we operate and also with special needs now it's pretty easy to say all that but it's actually quite hard to to get that message across because we've had quite a bit of discussion with parents in particular who said I don't want um, Peter Baliki to sit on the bus next to my child. Thank you very much. You would have concerns, wouldn't you, if a stranger was getting on the same so bus? It, 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 it sounds easy, but it's not as easy as you might think, but it is actually working. Which means, of course, there is access, more access for people to get on the bus. We have altered some of the timetables, we have altered some of the um, situations where you've got a primary school and a secondary school which are close together. So there's been quite a lot of discussion. The pilot is working. It's in Ely, Soham area predominantly, but it's East Cams generally. Um, wasn't easy to do it for all sorts of other reasons, particularly when it came to special needs as well. Mm. Okay, because there's even more concerns from parents about their right. child or what, what condition the child is in. And it doesn't always work for all of them, as you might imagine as well, Peter. Mm. Okay, but it has worked for some, um, and that and that actually is unique actually to Cambridge. And there's only a couple of counties doing that across the country. Do, do you have the data? Because, for instance, do we know how many people from Hilton work in Cambridge? No. And that's the problem. You see, we don't have the data. You can't do the mapping. Uh, no, and Joe, you know, it's, I think it's not just schools. It's my daughter works in Cambridge every day. And she has on the bus because well, Whippet didn't have any people going on the bus, that's why they But, then, but the, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's, a, it's a complex one because the timings of the buses didn't support you having to get into work before nine and leaving after five. And so it's a really complex situation. But I think having the data to say, yes, you know, 100 people in Hilton work in Cambridge, let's start with that and look at all the other villages around to start looking at some mapping of uh, uh, and try to solve those. We're not going to solve it today. No, we're not. Exactly. I just want to okay. raise it. As a... I think there are plenty of thoughts that people would wish to give. Mm. Okay. Do you think the county, the county council will pass down some, some of the subsidy that they currently offer the existing We do. Directors? We do. Because that's okay. important. And we do it to community transport as well. Mm. But you know the problems of the county budget, Peter, which actually is the elderly and the children, okay, which is really under pressure, mm. um, which we have a statutory duty to do. Uh, the statutory duties now. Um, we've done all the loan stuff already over the last couple of years, so we are getting down to some serious discussions now. Um, and I think the one thing you can guarantee it's got to change. Something has to happen, okay? And it's not one of us responsible, it's all of us responsible. And I mean, I would. Certainly encourage a survey. Well, I, I've a county council plan to do one because we do lots of separate ones. They're inconsistent in, in quality and, and accuracy. Perhaps county council to be looking at this as a holistic view to survey the county. Well, there's lots of things since the report was done on the 10th of, of August that I'm talking to officers about, and there are plenty of ideas floating around. But I can just come back to the predominantly Whippet situation yeah. has been Huntingdonshire. Mm. Okay, it, it is very has not affected these cams. It has not affected Finland um, city and a little bit in South Cams. And when I mean a little bit, I mean one or two routes. Yeah. Not not significantly. Predominantly, the Whippet situation is Huntingdon historically because that's where the company operated from. So it is quite, if you like, a unique Huntingdonshire, but not actually much around Yaxley which is in Huntingdonshire, yeah. okay, it's not actually in the south, it's not St Neath by the way either, it's quite around St Ives area, because that's predominantly where they were operating from, because they come out of the village, didn't they, this village. Assumptions tend to be made that people should use the guided bus, especially for schools, got to get there, yeah, that, that's the... Well that's where I think... Uh, difficulty, isn't it? Well, you, 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 yeah, you that's, that's, I think, where some of the thoughts need to be thinking about. Where do people want to go? Yeah. What time do they want to go? Is it work? Is it for, for college? Is it for 
people going to Bar Hill, by the way. I've, mm. I've had people who work in Bar Hill. Mm. Um, but lucky enough, that was before the result. They're not in this village, by the way, but I've had people who work in Bar Hill. Fence Yeah. Okay. Do you agree with um, a universal survey would be good, but also perhaps to ask people whether they would be happy to, to you know, for it to be in, increase in the preset, maybe, mm -hmm. because I'm sure most householders would, wouldn't mind yeah. a, a slight increase to accommodate, you know, a whole service. That, that's something. I, 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 you've, got that's to, something you've got to start somewhere, Sharon. I think. All I'm planting is, dare I say, the seed. Yeah. How, how much the seed grows, I think, is, is another question. Because, dare I say, you know, Hemingford Abbott, Hemingford Grey, Fenstanton, and all those other villages, okay? Houghton and Witton, I think, have kind of got their solution, by the way. Okay, they've worked on their solution already. I think they saw what was going to happen, because their bus service got reduced a couple of years ago, um, uh, considerably. And they decided they would take alternative action. And I think my, that parish council has already solved their problem. I hope that, fingers crossed, I can assist in, well, I've financially assisted already, but I think because they could see <laughs> what I call, they could see what was coming over the hill, and that was no buses. And they saw that a couple of years ago, and they've done something about it. And they're funding it, by the way. I'm just giving them a <laughs> giving them a bit of money, but unfortunately they're doing it all. And they're taking the initiative, it's their initiative in Hope and Whitton. But I think you'll find Hope and Whitton would not be on your list, Sharon. Because mm -hmm. I know what they're doing. Because I think they've solved their problem. Okay. Yeah, come Thank you. Thank you, David. Sure, sure, sure. Any other comments around the table at this stage? Thinking has to stop. Yeah. I wonder there were one or two questions I had over the, the document that we have here, points of clarification, um, which haven't been beat. Um, because it says service one, Hilton St. Ives, yeah. be replaced by service nine, which is well, service time was in one of the attachments that it gives uh, Monday and Friday. Yeah. Time it, tables. But on which is nine o'clock leaving the village and coming back into the village at quarter past one. But then it says under nine, St. Ives Elves with Pack of Everard, but then under the details for nine, it doesn't mention Pack of Everard. So I was trying to work out. Mm. What and then you've got three, which is Cambridge Packworth. Everard and Huntington, alternative journeys available on Woodland Coaches Service X3, except for Hilton. X3 is still running. Yeah, that's what I thought. It is. It's just they, they, not, they won't do the same route that they were doing. So it's not coming through Hilton anymore? No. It's still running. That, that's where there's a lot of been discussion between the tents of Elvita. There's been right. a lot of coming and goings, I think. Right. Okay. The X3 is still running, yes. but not through here. Sure. So, um, what do you guys want to do? Well, it would be useful to meet with old parish councils that are affected. Maybe you know, find out some more information at, an, at another meeting about mm -hmm. how Clayton and Whitton are doing on our service. But do you think we need to understand the requirements? Yes. Yeah, that's quite important. You know, what problem are you trying to fix with it? Generically, we know there's a problem, obviously there is a problem, but yeah, no. how do you quantify that? I don't know, I, I, I don't know how many people use the bus in Hilton myself. Yeah. And, and that's that's why I this point, do they not use it today, because actually it's, it's slightly off, it could be really popular, in which case it could fund itself in some way. What you don't know, for instance, is how many people <coughs> drive, like I do. Well, I I know what I do, if you want to go on the bus, I go to the park and ride like a and get on the kind of bus. So I know what I do, but how many other people do just that? I I don't know. But you've got a car to do it with. Yes, I know, but that's... Yeah, I guess that's the point. If there was a service that took people at the right time to the guard bus rather than go everywhere else, 
would, would a lot of people like yourself that perhaps drive today actually find a bus more convenient and do that instead and actually all of a sudden it would become part of the service. I think that's the, you know, people look at the existing solution and what's been taken away and think that's the problem, that perhaps that isn't the problem. I might use the other structure that's there. So it's much cheaper to run a bus from between here and the park and ride yeah. ten times a day than all the way into Cambridge five times mm -hmm. because there is the follow-on and the safer Campbell. So it is that integrated system that needs really looking at. I, I agree with you. The requirements of the village, we need to understand who here goes where. When. And when. Absolutely, and when. Anything to start giving Sorry. offering lifts, you've then got insurance difficulties. Yeah, must. But I think Sharon's point, actually, if you've got a few of the local villages together, and everyone got their requirements. There's probably a better solution that serves three or four villages, and there is just on its own that really probably can't justify a lot because of the number of people in the village, mm -hmm. and particularly Papworth and places like that potentially yeah. come through. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what they do. Us comes down to up to the guiding bus. Mm -hmm. really and there's about ten villages. Okay, there's about ten villages around St Olives. Okay, that include Papworth and all the others that are actually all in the same situation that Hilton is in. And 10 actually, when you think that's... But I think you do need to understand what the need is. Um, I think the Parish Council needs to set up a working group to be able to look at this outside the region. You can't just come back next week and tell you what we're going to mm. need some discussion and thought about it before in between then. Okay. I've tried to think about it and come back next meeting. Yeah. 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 Council do, do, yeah. do, do an online survey or something that we could sort of right, you know, get all, you know, yeah. all right. Think about it between now and next meeting and we'll, we'll form a group after that meeting and sit, we'll mm. discuss what we think should be done and then we'll come back to it. And noting that there are, will only be 11 months left at that point. Or 10. Yeah. I thought it was 12 months, so it's not yeah, nine. Nine hours, That's August. It, it's a year, mm. but not, I'm saying so nine, nine months, September, nine nine months, months is yeah. when you need to be had, had something in place, okay, because if you have to have something in place, you have to let the traffic commissioner know you've got something in place. Yeah. So it's nine months really, but you've got a couple of months after that where you're running from one to another. Thank you, Ian. Yes, sorry, sir. That's all right. No, so we'll move on. The other one I wanted to bring up before you go uh, was information on whole county council elections, May 2008, because we've got a couple of questions for you on that. If you don't mind. Yeah. No, no. So the map, you've got the map then. The map seems to indicate that uh, district council wise, Hilton will be Penn Stanton, but not Hemingway's anymore. Correct. Is that right? So that's a district change. council elections. Hilton yeah. is with Penn Stanton. Yeah. One member. One member. Right. I would not talk to Henry for Abbots if I was you too much, because uh, they're not entirely happy with their suggestion. They've been put with Offords, both of them, and got Manchester. So. Uh, uh, I wouldn't advise you talk to anybody. Oh yeah, got Manchester. Yeah, and then and then you got left with Grey. Yeah. And Houghton and Whitton. Yes. Together. In Huntingdon North. Uh, I think just on their own, aren't they? Oh, that's Huntingdon East. Sorry, I can't believe it. I, I knew it was too small when I looked at it on the thingy. Oh, yeah. Houghton and Whitton and Hemingford Grey and Houghton. Yes. Yes, they're together. Oh, okay. And on the uh, scheduled names of parish wards and number of councillors, yep. it said Fenstanton South, 11. Is that spread across those different, on this document, which is the local government in the I think it's one, isn't it? It says 11. It says 11. No. Fenstanton South, 11, number of councillors. Fenstanton North, 2. Fenstanton South, 11. And then it goes, uh, um, when you look at That's parish councillors. 
Well, that be a, might be 11 parish councillors. No, that says number of councillors, 11. Yeah. Does seem very high from yeah. St. Leeds and St. Albans. My understanding, Peter, without seeing that, is that Fed Stanton and Hilton have been put together with one district councillor. Yeah. And then you've got. Yeah, look at that. Maybe it's a time canal. Because it seems to be more than St. Ives, almost, or as many as St. Ives. The name of the parish ward and the number of councillors, so I think. I think it is parish. Because we've got the other document from HDC which says, uh, lists all the parishes. No, 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 no. The first bit is, the, the first bit is, Fenstanton 1, <coughs> um, this bit says Fenstanton 1. Mm. I think it's Fenstanton and Hilton 1. Henry to Gray and Houghton, Two, which is my understanding. Okay, this is the top bit. Yeah. And then Hemingford. Yeah. Hemingford Abbots, we've got Manchester, and the Offords is three district councillors. Right. So Hemingford Abbots, we've got Manchester, the two Offords will have three district councillors. That's the plan. Yeah. And we'll go down to one. And you will go down to one. Yeah. With Fen Stanton, mm -hmm. and they've already they've got one. You've got two because yeah. you're linked with all the others. So come next year, you will have one district councillor who will represent both both villages. The rationale I understand is connected with it's one school. No buses. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there'll be a bus at the school, maybe, but one dis you'll get one district councillor. Yep. Okay. Um, and th this whole thing is that the information has been sent through for um, that all these elections will take place in May 2018, which was a change that was announced. Yeah. The reason, the reason for that is they changed all the boundaries, hence all those changes. So all the boundaries are changed. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So with all the new boundaries, those are the new boundaries which then represents the new districts. So that's, uh, that's coming up next year and we had an email from Lisa who tells us that she's put that out now uh, because of they're going to be, um, it's May next year and Easter is just before the deadline. And that all went to the boundary commissioner in through no. But it's only districts, not counties. No. The county remains as is. Me. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ian. I don't think you have a choice, by the way. So? I don't think you have a choice. <laughs> no, I know. We didn't have a choice. And that was the whole thing. It was, yeah, we didn't have a choice, but the papers are out, so we thought we'd put it on. Um, excellent. Thank you very much. So. Going back to the agenda, 3.1. Thank Thank Thanks, Ian. Cheers. Now to 3.1, A14 update. Um, we received an email from Jay Pettit saying, I've just been advised that we would soon have our A14 branded construction vehicles in use, which will also have telematics which alert the logistics teams if they are using non municipal routes. Routes, not sure what soon means, but we'll keep you posted. So I think that we will obviously ask Jay to keep us updated on that. And I think that answers in some part Andy's comment because um, how soon is now? Um, we will see. Uh, item 3.2, car park policy discussing clarification. There's a question raised about um, the use of the car park as, sorry, <coughs> rattling off. Um, any comments on 3.2? Tell you that. It's the, um, why has this come up again? I thought we discussed this. This was just, what, 3.1 or 3.2? So I was just counting that. I haven't asked you guys, oh, sorry, ladies, sorry. for your comments on 3.1. Okay. Okay. 3.2, this was a question that had been raised by a councillor as to what the policy was on the car park. This is the answer, okay. which is, there's a temporary park in the Green Spaces Management Policy 4.12, there's temporary parking available adjacent to the village hall. 
where the surface is either gravel or lattice paving, primarily the space is intended for all visitors to appeal to, not exclusively for village hall. Visitors under no circumstances should this space be used for long term parking. This is not a designated car park, it is still part of green. So that answers that question. I think those who discussed it at the meeting were, were okay with it. Yeah. yeah. Good. Thank you. So that's 3.2 done. Item um, 4, we move to 4. So 4.1 is green open spaces, updated tree works. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, 19th of July, the work group met, and uh, uh, I'll just go through the highlights of uh, what was discussed and some of the conclusions we came to. Um, first on the agenda was the we did a, a review of the marine regime, and um, the only significant change that we would like to make is that the area around the church, which we have uh, for a couple of years put to hay. We're going to give up on that because it's um, turning out to be more trouble than it's worth, <laughs> to be honest. So the ground lies very wet, um, it's undulating, and there are trees and paths and various things. So we're going to include that back into the normal mowing regime. Thank you. Um, the next, next issue was uh, tree work. We've got, uh, I think as mentioned in the last meeting, we've done a, uh, quite a hefty survey. Um, we're still working through that. Um, and we'll come back okay. probably next month with the list of prioritised works. Okay, does that include the trees on Gravely Way? Yes. We did. So, yeah. mm -hmm. We've covered a bigger area this year than we've ever done. Not dissimilar. No, no, that um, number of requests, sorry, the number of suggested uh, directions is uh, as high as it can be. And will that include planting? Planting. Okay, sorry. Um, no, that's specifically the, what's going to result from the survey. And um, uh, I know there's another item on the agenda coming up which has asked for some more trees to be added to that. So, um, so we'll take the whole thing in the in the round and present it next. Yep. Because um, I know the timing was around October time to park. Yes. Right. Next point. Mm -hmm. uh, the there was a a report that somebody had been um, clipping the hedge in the wilderness, um, and uh, after the our open spaces meeting, we went and inspected it. There has been some work done there, but it wasn't the big cutting back that we had originally uh, scheduled to be done at the beginning of the year, uh, that is still yet to be done. You know, it looked like somebody was just uh, doing some small modifications to line the path down by the um, entrance into the field. Um, so nothing, nothing to worry about there, but we will obviously monitor that hedge and hopefully get the work done there implemented when we're back in the uh, cutting season. New tree planting, where and when, was another issue we discussed. Uh, October is the month to do it. Um, you may remember we've got uh, quite a few trees that were given to us by Bridget Halford from HTC. They're still in pots and just about got through the summer. Um, we were thinking a good place to, to plant um, some trees is where the um, is uh, by the gate into the wilderness produced quite a large copse there in front of Monarch Farm, which was where traditionally the access point for farm vehicles had come off the road. And we thought we would put a group of trees there. And, um, that was about the only site we identified, wasn't it, as being prime. So this is as you come, as you go into the wilderness, the gate, to the left hand side, set back from the road, will plant an elongated copse of trees in the Is that before you get to the bin? Or are yes. you sort of oh, yeah. up into the wilderness or before you get to the No, not just the wilderness, on the green. Okay. Remember we took those three trees down, yeah. too close to the road. So these are coming back really where that 
the, the pathway was was sort of flattened where the fire vehicles went in, but towards slightly towards the um, the, the rural escape. Um, we discussed goalposts and the pitch mowing, the football pitch. Um, we uh, had asked a few people around the village about who plays football, what happens, and uh, it does appear that it's, it's almost unheard of that somebody would play a game with two goalposts around. What tends to happen is you get some older kids playing and one younger kids want to play. So having two goal posts is a good thing to have, but they don't necessarily need to be connected by a huge pitch. So uh, although uh, time has marched on, the conclusion we came to that it would be good to have the two posts from the end of the hay cut to around about October time, um, and then go down to one post, and then the following year, do the same routine again with two posts, but um, then the following year, pull the other post out. You know, so we oscillate. Um, obviously, that's on the basis that, I'm um, um, oh, sorry, we would just mow half the pitch um, during the winter, and that's on the basis that the um, club is not playing next year. Uh, obviously, we would review that if they did then get back. Um, and cut the whole um, Any other business? There was, uh, we discussed the uh, maintenance of the maze um, and uh, action pending on us is to compose a letter to English Heritage to um, get up to speed with what was done in the past and see whether there's any assistance there. So it's not been done yet, but um, that's on the list. And then we reviewed the jobs list for the volunteer group and it's the, the usual things like ivy cutting, tree planting, the thicket on Sparrow Way and also anything that we can do on the list that's uh, um, from the survey which was put in our volunteer capabilities. And that's about it. Make sure we get a, it's a, from what you're saying, we're going to get more information next month. About the tree work. Yeah. 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 And um, the drop post will come on to that point point one. In more depth just to agree on. Yeah. And then there's a bit I hate some. Plate four point six will come on to as well, which is paper. Mm -hmm. So a separate item. Any questions for Kieran? Thank you very much. 4.2, what for me, and stop. Okay. A true safety course attended mm -hmm. by Kieran and Ian. Thank you. Yes, the uh, two of went to uh, a true safety course organised by HDC uh, on the 10th of August. Um, I'll try and condense four hours into about three minutes. So we'll see how we do. But um, what really was the, the, the main part of it was looking at uh, three things. What is the legal framework that we need to be aware of and where do the responsibilities lie? Um, it was then to look at um, what constitutes an acceptable recording and reporting system. Um, and then the third part of it was we... Uh, went out and had a practical session looking at a range of semi-mature and mature trees uh, in Huntingdon, which was quite interesting. So the, the legal framework is, is an interesting one, um, and it's really divided into two main sections. It's things that are under common law, and to a large extent, common law is, is common sense. Um, and thank goodness it's accepted that the onus, when we start to talk about that, is not just on the PC, but it's also on the individual. So it's up to uh, the members of the public to, to use common sense when they're going around the village. Um, didn't always occur, but uh, we live in hope. And then there is the other part of it, say, which is statute law. Um, and a lot of that revolves around what is 
called the Occupier's Liability. Um, and there are a couple of acts that cover that. Um, and then there's also uh, the Compensation Act of 2006. Uh, so it, it covers that as well. So we were made aware that that's how we need to structure our thoughts when putting together a policy for assessing trees. Now, when it comes to actually uh, getting a reporting system, it, it was quite heartening that, in fact, what we have been doing for the last few years um, is, is, is pretty good, really. It's just that what we don't perhaps have is as good an audit trail as perhaps we should. Um, and in fact, as, as we were arriving at the meeting, um, we were sort of saying what we were going to learn today. And um, I sort of turned to Kieran and said, well, I think we're going to be told we have to do a better, better audit. And that's exactly what we brought to our attention. Um, and the, what we need to do within that reporting system is under five headings, which is um, make sure that it, it demonstrates a responsible proactive management. Um, it is where the scope of the inspection is defined. Um, got to make sure that the whole program is systematic, that the recommended actions are acted upon, um, and that all the substantiating documentation is, is present. Now, at the moment, I say some of that is done, but perhaps not in quite the same detailed way as, as, as we should. And following on from that, um, I pulled together an inspection policy which Joe, you circulated everybody, did you not? Know, the yes. in there, Christ Council members. Um, this is in draft form. Um, I don't expect this to be discussed and signed off this evening um, because what we intend to do is to have another meeting of the um, Green Spaces group during the next month um, when we will also have a good study of this. This was only written at the end of last week. Um, but please have a look at that and if you have any comments um, over the next few days, bring them through to Kieran or myself and then we will include those comments in the, uh, in the meeting of the Green Group. So uh, really that's about, say, our four hours and three minutes. Um, we did then wander out and look at some mature trees and some of the problems that we saw there um, were bits and pieces that we, we had highlighted to us in a, a little um, picture gallery here. Um, we've each got a copy of this, but uh, I'll just pass this round so we can have a little study this evening. Um, so that was our, that was our practical three quarters an hour. So that was our course, very, very useful. Um, you know, lots of little notes and thoughts. Um, there was also lists of books that we can look for. Um, you know, some, some, what was the one I was looking for? Oh, here we go, The Body Language of Trees. <laughs> now it's, it's all on, on your Christmas list, isn't it? I hope so. Um, but yeah, no, there's some good ones. Tree Mechanics, Stupsy Explains the Tree, don't know what that's all about. Uh, the Law of Trees, um, so on and so forth. So there's, there's lots of bits and pieces that um, if you are interested in, you know, we've, we've got these lists here. It's very useful to see how the legal requirements of us as a council um, feed into actually what we have to do on an annual six monthly or whatever basis um, to make sure that uh, we are, uh, firstly, we're doing a really good job at spotting any problems which can become public safety issues and, um, and we seem to be doing it. So that if there's ever going to be a problem and claim that we are at least have a, a very well recognised and um, stringent discipline system that we can point to. Is there any leverage in this? Because we know we've had a conversation about some of the county trees that are in the village that aren't in such good health. We've ended up dealing with. Is there any of this information we can use to kind of push back on them to a better job of some of the trees in the village? That's a really good question. Um, 
the, I think the reason why HDC are putting effort into uh, bringing the parish councils up to speed is because they see much more of um, this sort of uh, work being undertaken by parish councils. Mm. Now, we have had a very, um, I think, uh, expansive view on the trees in the village. So we don't just look after the trees that stand on parish land, we look an eye on the trees generally. Uh, I think if we don't do it, I don't think anybody else will. Uh, or the you know people mm. obviously walking around the village, walking past whatever, looking mm. for problems, but um, it has to be done in an organised way. Mm. So I think we're going to get a lot of help. Mm. Probably we identify it, we can put the responsibility on them, because once you've identified a problem, it's their responsibility to fix it. And then they can have a leg stand on it, and it did happen, because it's been highlighted. They tend to get involved if the trees fall down, which is on the other There was one entire place of chestnut on the corner, wasn't there? Yeah. Was that That's right. diseased? Did they come and take it down? Or had it fallen down and they came and took it away? One along the back. I thought it was that came up and turned right. I think it was on the corner. Yeah. On the corner there. Um, right so now. I know they took away one that had come down, but I'm not sure if it's the same one that took it down. I think it turned right down that so the people did it on the right hand side. The, the actual seminar itself, I don't think, was, it was, had any accreditation. No. But it, it, it was an eye opener, really, to say, yeah. well, you have, a, as a parish council, you've got this responsibility. These are, this is the legal framework. Right. And therefore, what you should be doing is this kind of um, uh, surveying and procedure, and have yeah. it written down, have it traceable. Yeah. And that was really the, in the yeah. nutshell what came out of it. Whereas we've gone out and done a survey. Yeah. Year and acted on that in accordance with the line of the priority raised on the to yeah. ensure that the trees are on the same standard, but it's, but it's just formalising that a little bit more. Absolutely. Yeah. And keeping a separate record that Absolutely. this was a survey, this is a work that was completed. And having a policy. Yeah. yeah. Which was there on, written down no, before. No, I do. Yeah. So I just got one comment on policy. Yep. Is this an approved tree decision? Yes. Would that vary each time? Or would we actually be paying him to come? Because obviously, Mr. Tree Surgeon might have a vested interest in if you use a different one each time, do you think? Or is it one to be discussed? No, I mean, that was my interpretation for inclusion in our draft. Okay. Um, we also have an example of another uh, okay. uh, policy. Yep. Uh, that was carried out by Little Paxton, and they have, they go as far as to have an HDC approved tree surgeon. Okay. But he then produces a um, multi page document um, which is of significant cost. Okay. Now, yes. currently, what we do seems to work, yeah. uh, it seems to be within what we were asked to do when we are on the course, and um, it doesn't cost us anything. No. So I thought that was the better approach rather than going to copy what they were doing. Okay. Yeah. And we do split the work between That's the three the point surgeons. Yeah. So, and the person who helps us with this knows full well that there's no obligation. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Great. So, um, you're going to look at that. So we'll get, we'll get through it again. Yeah. Then presumably we'll have to go to the policy group. So yeah. Yes. Look down. Look down. And, and then, then brought to the panel. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you, okay. Thank you for attending. Okay. Okay. No questions. That's good. Item 4.2.
trying to say thanks for playing our volunteer group to remember like this was a question that came up and I just didn't that much. I don't think we'd agree, I, I definitely remember it coming up but I can't. Sorry? Sorry? Yes, but I remember it being aired before that, oh, the sorry. idea of the two being amalgamated, but I don't think it went any further than that. So um and by the way, obviously we're happy to amalgamate the two. Should we defer it until Anne is here? She's been instrumental in both. Yeah, it was Anne that queried it. It would be unfair if we voted against them to amalgamate them. Express it, yeah. I defer that to Anne. Yeah. 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 Yeah
um, help, help doing that and allow additional sunlight to enter the park. So a couple of trees have been requested to be removed, a small one in the southern corner and a big sycamore in the playground. I'd like permission and funding to knock up a couple of bins in the wooded area to compost the leaves and grass, grass cutting. So, anybody got any thoughts? I didn't know about There's one more line up there that said discuss. Um, so I guess if, if, if we go sort of in reverse order, mm -hmm. but jump one, mm -hmm. the trees, mm -hmm. are they on, is that included in, no it's not included in the, um, mm -hmm. I suggest perhaps the three of us meet one evening, you can point out the ones you want okay. to yeah. remove and then yeah. we'll... Um, well one I think you could take out without any problem, but the, yeah. the other one is, I think we need to ask permission. Yeah, one yeah, looks like it's almost sub seed, isn't it? And kind of growing very close it's, to the farm. It's got bigger, well, yeah, mm. it's got bigger and bigger. Now it's bigger. Okay. Yeah, okay, good. And um, permission before funding. next meeting, yeah. Yeah, before mm. next meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Because okay. obviously this will have to come back because there are some costs involved in it mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Knock up a couple of bins in the wooded area to compost leaves and grass cuttings. If you could give us some indication of what funding would be required. In principle, is that okay? Because that's actually our land, isn't it? It's actually quite yeah. an interesting land. It's not green, but it's parish council land. And you know, I think yeah. we'll just yeah. it. We're, yeah. We could make it a lot nicer. If it, but if we could have some bins in there, at least when we remove the leaves, we're not shipping them back to people's houses. We can just put them in the bins and we can have a sort of ecosystem going on. Mm. Any thoughts? It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I mean, if you if you did have uh, somewhere to put the grass cuttings, I think you probably wouldn't have to include the mowing in the volunteer thing because at the moment we're, it's, it's in the contract, the maintenance contract to be mowed. Yeah. But he pick them sorry, does he pick them up? No, he doesn't because that bit's not in the contract. Uh, that's <laughs> what, and that's one of the problems. But but he, we could ask uh, for yeah. it to be picked up as long as he's got somewhere to put it. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah. been. But it's one of the problems that if you've got volunteers and paid staff working on the same project, I don't think it necessarily works because you sort of you have to know who's in charge and what's what's being done away. So that's that was the only reason why I could be in there. Could could I suggest then that perhaps this email is discussed by the group? Or could I be invited to the meeting? Yeah, exactly. As a guest speaker. Do you think? Say yes, Ian. <laughs> yes. Well, we may, as, we may as well meet in the play park, mightn't we? <laughs> Just go on the swings. Swing. Yeah, why don't we do that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 and yeah. then we can, we can discuss all the individual bits and come up with a solution yeah. to the whole. Yeah. Good. I think it does make sense to remove some trees or, you know, cut some trees back because that's the whole problem, isn't it? It's very dark, very damp, and the trees just drop the leaves in there. So it's, it's not an attractive place for kids to go, is it? Within the survey, that looks like it's quite a soft place. Within the survey. You haven't got young children. Sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, in the survey that Glenn and I did, we identified that there would need to be quite a bit of work done next to the um, play park. So, um, yeah, we'd already thought it through. But, uh, well, the, let's let's the, the raising crowns. Uh, right. Raising crowns? Raising crowns. Raising crowns. crowns. But we, could, we, we, we took three trees out. It's there. the sunlight that's the problem from the top. Mm -hmm. yeah, but we can stop it there. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. I think then we'll come up with the, the, the low ground. Yeah. Right. Just, um, okay with that? Have yeah, fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I won't leave that. Yeah. Um, 5.5 5. 5 from Correspondence Communications. 5.1 Decision on Goldpost New Netting following inspection and discussion by Green Open Spaces. I think we've had the recommendation from the Green Open Spaces that. Yeah, I'll go through it again. Remind everybody, please. Okay. Between the Haycats yes. and uh, end of October, yeah. we have two goals in yeah. place. Not necessarily forming a pitch, but giving two opportunities for two groups to play. Mm -hmm. um, and then from October onwards, we, we move one, we then have, um, and then we mow half. The pitch to give an area to play on, but on the basis that the club is not playing next year, there, we, well, there isn't a, a, no point in making a full pitch. And then, um, obviously, if that changes, we'll review it. Um, yeah, and then the second goal goes back in 
in the alternative space. So, so, that's that's your, so that's your proposal. Yeah. I'll second that. All those in favour? Thank you. Sorry. Uh, I have a question for Graham though. We, we need to find the holes. We said something about you have a friend. Yes. With a you never get to where he is at the moment. He's in North Korea. <laughs> I'll find that back. Yes, so if he gets back, I'll um I'll invite him over and say, right. Yeah, when that's he, fine. When he gets back. Yes, if he gets back. You went today. Hopefully not with his message to take. So yeah, I'll have a look. Um five point is a request from BTA can reach the main tables for talk on the internet. To properties that are in church land, and we're trying to find out because HDC denied any knowledge of their interest in the land over the beyond the, um, the strip of land that's the parish council's. Now, then the parish council was approached to lay a gas main across the green, it charged three pounds a metre. Right? British gas offered a pound, the parish council charged three, probably recommendation. And that was what was agreed on. But at that time, we were talking of 358 metres of land. Now, we asked HDC about... Um, well, they were charging, because their strip of land is longer than our strip of land. Firstly, they denied that they owned the land. And we then had to point out to HDC that they, in fact, took 7,500 pounds <laughs> across that land. <laughs> but then the chap who was dealing with it left. Yeah, so the trail's gone cold, mm. and I wrote to somebody else, Yeah, and I've had no Nothing response. Sense. In the meantime, we've got this guy He's in the little house at the bottom there, yeah. but we can't... Yeah, but they can get as angsty as mm. they want until we get a proper answer. So I think we need to chase HDC again, because we can't give a separate agreement yeah. to that without... And if we, if we stick to that process, it's going to force HDC into having to make a decision. I thought part of the issue was whether they were crossing our land or not. I think we looked at them that last time right. and so agreed it was about to cross our land. And okay, what you're talking about is a pittance. Yes. Could we not, I mean, we said it would be good if we could you know, couple up with HDC and have a uniform yeah. thing. If we're having trouble communicating with HTC on this, mm. can we not go it alone and just come up with a come up with a Oh, so we could say to him, yeah, BT, BT, we're happy for you, but we are not giving agreement for the rest of it. That yeah, has to come from HTC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And these people are now. Yeah, yeah. Data yeah. illustration yeah. from us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can go directly yeah. to mm. HTC. Mm. 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 Because that will be the because the bit across our land will take them probably an hour. Yeah, we're doing a whole for the bank and the new house at the yeah, bottom yeah. the mm. At the back of the properties. But we need to take something just to prove whose land is a, yeah, yeah. his own sort of mm. And I, can, I can't tell you how long it's probably a metre and a bit. Yeah. It's not, it's not a lot. Mm. Which is why I wanted rather to go hand in hand with H D C so that we won't say, well we'll have twenty quid and then H D C said, Well we want twenty pound a metre. All the way round, because they would be more used to laying that sort of. If you go to the district value, they're going to charge us three to four hundred pounds to come up with a figure yeah. for a metre and a half of land. But surely this is our problem. Isn't it? I mean, we didn't give them the house. They must have a problem before. You would have, as long as you could show that you're obliging. Yeah. So we cannot be chasing them. So what do you reckon? Under quid. Under quid. Yeah. Yeah. So <coughs> okay. Let's go around and say. 100 pound to lay this across our land, leave it to you to uh, negotiate with HTC further. These are the people we've approached. Yeah. The rules are paid work associated with them, aren't they? Don't they? They'll be paid work associated with yeah, them. Yeah. It'll be one off charge. Yeah. Right. Sounds fine to me, but I'll take that. If it's a metre and a half, then it's quite an important metre and a half. And obviously, the land being put back to the same condition as it is prior to being dug up. Please. 
Yeah. 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 So the proposal is we go back to BT Open Reach and say that the Hilton Parish Council agrees that they can lay the cable the telephone internet access across that strip of land at the end of Church Lane, hundred pound. Please group. Sorry, that's charging the BT, yeah. not the residents. Oh right. Yeah. Sorry. Um, sort of a token about yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, on the condition that they then have to discuss with HTC access across the remaining piece of land and that they make good the surface as it was. Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I propose that. So, yeah, no problem. All those in favour? Thank you. Okay, 5.3 is a request for donation to the British Legion. The Parish Council has traditionally uh, provided uh, a donation of £60 for the Royal British Legion for the uh, Remembrance Sunday reads. Um, I propose that we continue to do that. This year is particularly good because the reads are in good condition for last time. So the British Legion will get, get money to get money. Yes. Yeah. So I propose that we continue the £60 donation to the Royal British Legion for Remembrance Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'll second it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. All those in favour? Thank you very much. Can I say a very big thank you? It's a pleasure. Could you record that, please? Thank you. Uh, email from Grave. Okay, yeah, five point four. So, email from Grave Way residents are concerned about the safety of the junction during the cutting road. Cutting road is gap. So we have a big gold long email from a number of residents along Grave Way talking about the problems that are faced coming out of into Potter Road from Grave Way and that discussions have been held with Ian Bates from Cambridge County Council and asking what can be done uh, to sort that out. So I, I don't know about you, but I was proposing that I would volunteer to meet with the people who have um, written and perhaps Ian Bates, and ask them what they want to see done about it before we go to the village and ask the village's opinion on what might be done because some people will um, want to see one thing, the people living in the adjacent properties that might not want to see that as a solution. Um, there's an email from some a, a villager saying, Why can't we have humps all the way along there? Now I know that when the speed indicators for Cotton Road, right? that was instead of humps because the mm -hmm. complaints from residents along Cotton Road about the noises that the humps would make mm -hmm. and vibrations. So there is a lot to be done around this, but I thought that we should uh, listen, actually see what they want to suggest rather than it's just... It's worth opening it up for a wider audience if they want, wish to attend, because a lot of the complaints come from a number of individuals on Gravy Way, obviously it affects everyone that lives... I thought it was the first step, I would find out what they're suggesting could be a solution. Yeah. Well, they've written some of the suggestions that are... Three people, people out of the... Unless we've got here over... I think if we did an yeah. open meeting, I think you need to have a meeting where you've got three or four or five ideas. Yeah. So I thought first point, taking yeah. steps. Yeah. So step one, yeah. talk to these people, ask them what their actual solutions to the problem that they've raised are. Step two is to survey that round with a meeting at the end of it to discuss what's been suggested and ways. Then there is a um, scheme group HEC or CCC, the matching funding scheme, mm -hmm. which the crossing road. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad he's done it as well. Oh. It's like he's got a little puddle on the floor. Um, do that. Yeah. You're gonna, you will get lots of ideas. And, and some of them will be, some people won't come, some people will. I wonder if it, uh, it seems to be done beforehand or as well as. <coughs> just to try and get a meeting with one of the road planners at an HCC or CCC and, and find out what potentially the options could be. Yeah. Because yeah, it is dangerous to put a lot of accidents. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was going to say because actually the highways have, you know, there might be 
some of the solutions we might suggest might not be yeah. appropriate yeah. in high rates. Absolutely. And then, and we'd also I get a feel for how the mechanism would be. Yeah, what the cost I'd is. I'd be very happy to join you if you want to do that. But yeah. can I just stipulate, what I think we need to make sure that it's a safer crossing, not an easier crossing. Because I think that Brady Road is in danger of being quite a good route. And so I don't think we want to encourage people down there, but it needs no, to be a safer route. Because it's not nice on the route, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so we do. So there's... It's I not there are some cheap solutions. Traffic lights or no. mini roundabout? No. No. Traffic lights. No. The, the danger with one of the objections you have to traffic lights is people who live around there, do they want traffic lights yeah. shining mm -hmm. through their houses? It's it's really cool. Cool. Yeah. So there, there, there will be ways. So let's take it forward, step by step, find out what the county council might suggest as a solution, find out what the people want. These people were proposing as a solution. Find out then what the village <coughs> wants to see in its village regarding a road improvement at that junction or mm. not. What the costumes are, what funding is available, and whether people would be happy to pay for it if the precept was increased to cover the cost of it. Yeah. Because cost. Yeah. Once you start saying to people, okay, this is a solution, but it's going to cost you over two years an extra what on your precept. Desire for it made fade away, fall away. But we don't know because we don't know what the costumes are, we don't know what. Um, so let's find out some more information. This is the start. There's a long way to go, there's crossing two years to get sorted out. But so we pile information here? Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah, I could just ask if hats are included at some point in this process as part of what built Match on Traffic does. Remember the RSC and the HCV and also is looking at traffic issues through the village. Yep. When we get further down yeah. the line, this is the first bit is to address the people who have um, written in requesting this, and That's then fine. we'll go on from there. Can I do that first, or you can okay. do the meeting? Talk to CCC. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll yeah. do it that way now. <laughs> just so one, just one better in front, one, one round or the other. Kieran and I are. But it's interesting how it's being passed back from Cambridge and County Council. Yes, to our council here, but it's different people too. No, it's different people. We could go. Just yeah. sort of all right. Yeah. 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 So, at the moment, do you want me to reply to the residents to say that we're going to come back? Yeah, to do that, and then we'll ask to meet them. Yeah. Please, before you do meet with the residents, it's worthwhile bearing in mind what Parish Council have done over the last X number of years. Two things primarily. One is that we put in the traffic calming on Potter Road. Yeah. Um, and what's another thing? Gravely way speed reduction. Well, grave, gravely way. Oh, sorry, the other thing was we have brought the speed limit down from 40 miles an hour to 30 mm. miles an hour. Mm. So we have been very active in the past and we've done two things because quite often people say, well, oh, the parish council could do nothing about this. But we have. Yeah. But we're now taking it a stage further because we understand that you still have concerns. Yeah, and that's why I want to meet the people in Britain to say, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You presented the problem, let's have a solution. Um, take that out because, like I say, not everybody in the village may want yeah. an improvement on that. Uh, just to add, we did go to a similar meeting some time ago and they, uh, they, they said that their thinking in terms of traffic control has uh, developed quite a lot. Yeah, they did, years, that's true. And just putting the speed bumps in is, uh, is not the answer. So I know the letters here are saying speed bumps and yeah. some of them are. Um, that's why I think having uh, that input from yeah. CCC. Yeah, fine. Increase the evolution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we know that when speed bumps were considered for Potter Road, there were a number of people who objected to that because of Gregory Way. Sorry? And Gregory Way. And Gregory Way, yes. It was, it's, I wasn't um, Very nice. so in, um, aware of what happened with Gregory Way, but there was a big old fallout, wasn't there? There was people who yeah. wanted it and people who didn't. So we try and avoid that. Can I say something? Go on, Marco. Um, the exit from Church End going right up into the village is very dangerous. You might like to include that in your um, deliberations. You can set off thinking, okay, but going to looking towards Pat was fine. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. No. You might think, oh, I'm okay. You set off and there's somebody coming very fast down. And yeah. Thank you, Margaret. So that might be worth considering at the same time, please. Yep. 
Nein, wir haben es nicht Das We've done 5.5. 5.6, mm -hmm. uh, so this is membership for Joe for the Society of Local Council Club. Mm -hmm. Council Club. Council Club. Yes. So um, that is this time of year again where we would with um, the new and I think the cost mm -hmm. is somewhere in the last three pounds. So I propose that we pay that. Thank you, Sharon. All those in favour? Thank you very much. Uh, information 5.7 we've done. 5.8 Armistice Centenary. I'll read an email we have received. It says initial conversations are taking place as to how the centenary can be acknowledged, not at least not least to follow up major events in Hilton 2014 recording the start of World War One. Bear in mind that history of beacons through the centuries involves communicating joyous and serious events. A suggestion has been made that the Hilton Beacon should be looked at some point close to the centenary of the armistice on November the 11th, 2018, which falls on that remember of Sunday. I've been asked to bring this as a formal request to the attention of councillors and also to start thoughts regarding next year's major anniversary as to how the village was noted, particularly because such events take time to consume proposal for actions. Therefore, it's a formal request to be an agenda item at the next council meeting. Any <coughs> comments, observations? <laughs> On that day? On that day, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. So the 11th of November is obviously Armistice Day. It is Remembrance Sunday on 2018. We are aware that um, there is a uh, Fields experiment or thing going around the country at the moment, which seems to be aimed at scouts and brownies, but good guides. Um, so we may get a request to plant poppies at some place or other for 2018, but that will, they will obviously be flowering in the summer, not in November. So that's something we'll have to consider. Um, sorry, pictures. Pictures. And you can get pictures from you. We take pictures, photos. In the summer? Yes. yes. I think that's the idea. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it seems a very good <laughs> grand thing, but it's where they would be um, planted. Yeah. And then November 2018, answer to I guess if somebody comes along and says we're planning to hold an event on that day, would the um, council like it speaking? That's I'm thinking that time. We'll probably support that one. I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With date, with time, and where? Well, we've obviously got the wilderness, but time and time. Um, You've got to bear in mind it's a week after Parliament. It is. Mm -hmm. okay. But I think if we can light it, it should be done on the day. Because it's a significant 100 day, 100 year anniversary. And I'm sure there will be some more national move um, in the months ahead. But, um, although for um, one event this year, there was a very late national move movement for organising events, wasn't there? It was. Yes, very late. Mr. Cameron came out very late. Well, he didn't come out. Sorry, he announced that there was a national scheme very late into maybe it was last year, probably. Um, so we may not see national things. So um, yeah, let's um, wait for a proposal to come in. But we're not in hand to do the event ourselves. I don't think we do that. No, that's what I'm saying. That's that's the thing. No, we um, offer that the we support rather than support. support. We would support. I put it out, light it. On the day, and um, whatever group is going to organise an event on the day. Right. Yeah. 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 Can, I, can I just add that any anything that does evolve will keep you. Thank you very much, Martin. Um, everybody happy with that? Okay. Lovely. Item six, I think we have a reference on item six, which is uh, decide on matters regarding finance and risk assessment. So you have it. Payment of accounts at JSC Services, £660 for August. 
uh, Kirkic Pitch Mowing, two cups, £90. Methodist Church for the usage of the Methodist Church from the 1st of July to 2016 to the 21st of June 2017, £72. Uh, three Ecotricity Estimated Bills, £25.96, £25.19, £25.86. And... Oh, yeah, these, are, these are the bits that you've changed, isn't it? There's a couple of um, late questions, okay. yeah. Yeah, okay. Might as well get them in. Yeah, it's fine. Firework payment, including wax torches, of £1,893.20, which includes VAT, which we'll get back. Uh, SLCC card membership, membership £93. Uh, village handyman, sorry. No, 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 keep going. £103.95 for June, July and August. Uh, Clark salary. Um, Joe salary, um, two pounds August, five hundred thirty-nine pounds and seven pence, and postage of three pounds ninety. And then, so I propose that items get paid. Gentlemen, any comments? Multiple points in the corner. Yes. 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 Thank you, Sharon. All those in favour? Item 6.2, money's received. We had last year's VAT reimbursement of £876.64 come back in. As we tend to get it back in after we could do an annual claim. Uh, item 7 is councillors' items information only. No discussion, no decision. Right, okay. Here. 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 Brown. Me? No, Jen? Um, I had an email today to say that apparently there's been some barbecuing going on in the wilderness and mess has been left. But some barbecue? Yes, apparently. One. Apparently so. Um, but I'm not sure what we can do about it. We'll put it in the next agenda. It's in the uh, green open spaces policy document. No, 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 no camping or lighting of fires. Can I ask you day. to send that to Kieran for Green yeah. Open Spaces Management Group to look at yeah. and, and report yeah. the next meeting? Thank you very yeah. much. Okay. So the other thing to start is just to be aware yeah. that there are a lot of yeah. travellers that yes. are mm -hmm. about 30 kilometres moved up on the top of the hill there. 